We spent the last several weeks talking about statistical analysis and p-values, which means we've been focusing on the issue of statistical significance. We also talked about p-hacking and statistical biases, and we've made it clear that just because something is statistically significant doesn't mean it's important clinically. Today, I want to focus on the difference between statistical significance and clinical significance and discuss some other ways to look at the data from a research study that are useful for establishing clinical significance. Remember what statistical significance means. To get a p-value, researchers compare two numbers. Those numbers may have come from two different groups of people, for example, an intervention and control group, one group of people at two different times, perhaps before and after an intervention was applied, or one group of people in some target value, for example, the slope of a regression line and zero. The values being compared are estimates. Researchers calculated a value from a sample that represents their best estimate of the actual value for the entire population. The p-value is the probability of getting the estimates they got if there really isn't any difference between the two numbers. This has nothing to do with how big or meaningful the difference is. A small difference between two large samples can be statistically significant. And an intervention that causes large gains in some subjects and small gains in others may not produce a statistically significant result. Clinical significance, on the other hand, corresponds much more closely to our intuitive idea of significance. A result is clinically significant when it is big enough to make a difference in the treatment we give to a client. The appeal of statistical significance is that there is a single number and a widely accepted standard for establishing statistical significance. If the p-value is less than 0.05, a result is statistically significant. Whether a result is clinically significant depends on a number of factors, including the goals of a client and the cost associated with the intervention. An intervention that is inexpensive and easy to implement may be clinically significant even if it has a small effect. An intervention that is expensive, time-consuming, or has undesirable side effects may only be clinically significant if it has a very large effect.